Roberts and I work for the Wolverhampton Music Service and today I'd like to show you how to make a oboe reed from start to finish. In front of me I have all the oboe reed making equipment and I will show you step by step on how to make an oboe reed. In front of me I have the cane, the staples, the thread, the measuring equipment, a mandrel for holding the staple, knives, a cutting block, a plaque, a screwdriver, which is always essential for an oboist, and gold beater skin. And over to the end product. As always, you start by soaking the cane in water first. I have here a reed, two reeds to show you later on. And I'm going to start first of all by tying on the piece of cane into one of these over reeds. With this piece of cane, Gaussian shaped cane, I'm going to just take off first of all the ends of the shiny bit of bamboo. This is so it will fit more snugly onto the oboe staple, which I will show you in a second. Now that's quite thin down, which is good, you can see that. Um, and now I'm going to get the staple ready using the mandrel, which is slightly oval on the ends. And I'm going to just firm that up so I can get a good grip of this when I'm going to now put the oboe ca cane onto the staple. We've got to match up the ovalness of it, obviously it's that way round, and I'm going to start to tie it on. I need to now just take over my thread and a ruler to measure the length of the finished cane, top of the cane, to the bottom of the staple. Just to take another look at the staple, it's the cork bit that goes into the top of the oboe and it's got a metal staple on the top, we call them staples. You need to find something you can pull quite hard against. As you can see, I've made a few recently. I'm not chopped off the, the, the cotton. This is extra strong cotton, stuff that you can't break by just pulling it. It's quite expensive, but it's just, you don't use very much of it. So what I'm doing is I'm tying on the cotton onto the, the draw handle, and I'm now I'm ready to tie onto my cane. Yep, nice and strong. So tying on. Uh, it's a bit like a little crocodile. The oval shape is there and this goes on like little snappers there. Okay, and now I'm going to tie it all the way around. But I've got to measure it to what I've worked out as 73 millimetres, roughly. And this will be the height of the reed. So I have some room for, to manoeuvre when I'm tuning it in for the oval. Okay, that's just a bit too long, so I pull it down a tiny bit more. There it is. Now I've managed to get the, the reed height to the bottom of the staple about 74 to 75 uh, millimetres. I'm going to get on with the tying on. So the first thing is to get a good grip of it. It does hurt your hands if you do too many at once, but this is the start. First thing we do is wrap it round once. I'm checking this side and this side. As you can see, the aperture is different. So I'm going to just release the, the thread a little bit and I'm going to try and balance it up as much as I can with this piece of cane. Nope, it's not quite there yet. I just need to flick it across a little bit more. It's quite detailed, this bit. Now, you can hear it stretching. Now, that is a bit more even. The aperture is even. And now I've just got to double check it's actually straight. You can see this thing here. So I'm keeping the pressure on the, the thread. And I'm going to just make sure that it's straight to the staple. It could be a very fine adjustment to this one. And it's, you've got to get it as straight as you possibly can. There it is. I'm happy with that. So now I'm just checking the aperture here and here. And now I'm going to do some very careful binding. This is basically thread to thread as close as you can and I can see how much my hand has been stretched each time I'm putting it round and pulling it tight. Keep going, it's beginning to cut through my fingers but that's okay, it's going to be a great read. And when you think you've reached the top of the staple, to get the thread to go to the lower part of the bind. Here it is. Keep it as close as you possibly can, stretching all the time. I've got it very tight here, you can hear it, and in my hands, which are pretty much purple by now. It's going to be a lovely read. I can feel it already. Keeping it tight all the time. And I'm going to tie it as neatly as I can without my glasses on. 
the end of the cane that I can see and just a tiny weeny bit further. That'll be fine. It's tying it on for strength and also to stop any air gaps. So we do a little fancy over and under first knot. And again, you see how I loop it, put it over the top and then here it is and I'm going to pull tight. That's quite tricky to do, it takes a lot of practice. But when you've made about, I don't know how many reads I've made in the past. Anyhow, there it goes. And now I'm going to cut the thread and we can deal with the other part of it. And here is the finished read, tied on. And this is shiny cane, shiny cane, and it's ready for now scraping. So I'm just gonna put it back in the water for a little moment or two to make sure that it doesn't crack in my hands. And I'm going to choose my reed making knife, which is I've had for years. And it's a bit like a chisel, but only a long handle, like a long blade chisel. It's a chisel and you use it sideways like that. Here we go. So the first thing I need to do is to take off a rough amount of cane off the top, the shiny stuff again, like at the other, I did the other end. And this basically gets the reed a little bit more recognisable to what you're used to. It's very thick at the moment, as you can see there, and I'm going to pare that right down. It's a bit like whittling a stick. The trick with making a reed is making sure you've got the two sides are the same. So whatever you do one side, you've got to remember to do the other side. The same amount, the same everything. Now this feels like good cane to me. It's scraping off very nicely. So I'm getting excited. This is a very sharp knife. It's a blade, the sideways blade, as you can see, I'm just whittling this stick down, this piece of cane, this piece of bamboo cane. And I'm just taking quite a bit off the end because the first thing I want to do to get down to thin enough so I can cut the end off so that I can now make it look like an overread. With the overread, there's a shape to be had if you can see this pencil being drawn on here. And this is what we call a U shape. It's a bit curvy at the moment because it's a bit shiny, it's not matching. And this bit here is called the heart. We don't want to scrape that. We want to leave that as almost like a little tiny little hill in the middle. So I'm scraping all here and here, all round what we call the shoulders here and here, and of course the tip. I've been scraping a while now, and as you can see, I've just marked up with my pencil, a clear U shape is appearing. Of course, I'm using this, I'm scraping at the back of this, um, the U shape, the shoulders here and here, and I'm leaving the heart, which if I just show you again, is this middle bit here, and it should be almost like a little tiny hill in the middle. Now, a good trick here is to try and get them the same both sides. So I'm going to put my knife in quite firmly there, and I'm going to just turn the reed round to make sure I've got the same length of scrape on both sides. I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, this is going to be the start of my U coming right like this so that I can get it on. And there is my, my heart. They call it the heart. I'm going to take some shoulders off here and here. And the tip along this one is what I'm going to chop in a second so we can get inside. I'm ready to cut the tip off the, the, the reed to, so we can have really sharp blades. Now this is with a Stanley knife blade, which I'm going to have to get a little bit of pressure on to get my eye in. I've got a line on the wood block. I've also drawn one on the reed so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to line this up here and press really, really hard. And now you can see that's the end tip and we now have an open over reed. I've just chopped the, the, the tip off and you can see I've got some markings on here. Um, I don't, don't normally mark it up, but you can see what I've been doing. Now, just see if it's got any chance of life. <coughs> yeah, it's got a noise going, which is not bad. Okay, at this stage, it takes a long time to make a reed. You've got to be very patient. This is a plaque and it goes between the blades. Be very, very careful when you use this. It's slightly convexed, sticking out, so it joins, looks the shape of the over, over breed, slightly oval. Now, we've got to start the scraping all over again, and this takes some time. Now, we're getting down to thin cane, so it has to be done with extreme care, especially the tip. I'm taking the knife and scraping it upwards so that I don't dig into the cane too much and flake it off the end. 
it's still got to remain whole. You can hear me scraping away. Sometimes I use the pleck and just move it slightly to the side so I can get a really good look at that shoulder. And when there's a buildup of cane, I just wipe it onto my trousers or skirt or whatever I've got on. There it is. As you can see, I'm making that lovely shape. I'm looking at the shoulders here, there, and the shoulder here. And then I'm scraping a little bit off the tip, probably about two or three millimeters. Okay, so continue with the scraping. The tip, the shoulders, there they go, there they've disappeared. Now I've just got to make sure I don't touch that heart too much. Just the back edge of it and here. Now it takes a long time to build up the skills of scraping, but if you're good at whittling sticks, it's the start. You're going to see there's a sound. <coughs> yep, getting better. Here we go, it's getting more like an oboe sound, cawing sound. Now I've just got to do this side to match it up. There, remember, there's the shoulders, the tip and the shoulders. And then I'm wanting to remain, keep the heart fairly whole at the moment. Okay, so I'm just doing a very quick scrape here. This, is, this takes a lot of time to get good at the tip because you can take off the end and then that's the end of the reed. So here it is here. I'm just taking a little bit off the back. See what it's like right below the heart on the back edge of that U. I'm going to give it one last scrape and then show you the finished product. There it is, a reed in the making. Now this will take me another maybe 20 minutes fiddling about, playing it in the oboe. In fact, I'll just try that. It's a bit tough, it's a bit hard yet, so I'm going to just try it on the oboe, see how much, what, what I've got to do to adjust it. Here it goes. Sounds good, very hard to play though. So that's going to have to be a lot more to come off yet. Just having a little final go before I start really playing it and I just noticed there may be a tiny little gap where the little bit of air is leaking out of. So in this case what we use um, in the oboe trade is gold beater skin. This is basically very fine fish skin and I'm just going to cut a little tiny section off with my Stanley knife if I can find it. Yep there it is and just spread it about. Tiny little rectangle there it is, you can see I've had them out the same bit before, that to one side. And to fix it to this, I just need to lick the end of this, a bit like an envelope, and then push it down. It's easy, then wet a finger, and then just put it all the way around, just in case there's a tiny weeny gap at that base of the reed. There it is, gold beater skin. And that reed, after about 20 minutes of playing around with it, and keep scraping and playing and doing all that kind of thing, it's going to work very nicely. Here it is on the oboe. Sometimes one side of the reed is better than the other, the other side works better. So I'm going to have to scrape a little bit more off. That's going to take some time. So this is the reed I made today, the purple one, and this one I made last week with the orange thread. So you put it onto the end of the oboe now, make sure it wriggles in nicely and then have a go at, I think my favourite note, which if you can remember from the first video is G. It's got a lovely husky sound which I'm liking but it's still quite hard to play so I'm going to have to keep adjusting for the, over the next week or two. time a lot of skill to make an oboe reed and they still need adjusting as they go on depending on the life of the reed and how you treat it and how much you play um, so that's it basically gives you an idea how they are created until next time mm -hmm.